This video is sponsored in part by Brilliant. Now, exactly one year ago, I set out to break what for me was a bad habit. I wanted to stop using social media so much. I felt like I was addicted to late night scrolling, early morning scrolling, any time of day scrolling. It was my preferred method of procrastination, was limiting my ability to focus, and was just a huge waste of time. Who gets to the end of the year and thinks, I'm so happy I spent 500 hours on Instagram? So I installed this app called Moment to track my usage. Surely knowing I was wasting so much time would help, but it really didn't. I saved about 15 minutes a day and instead just felt horrible and guilty whenever I was using my phone. This led to a spiral of why can't I do this and what's wrong with me until I saw this. Myth, a lack of willpower is to blame for our bad habits. Myth apps can help us change our behavior. Everything that I thought about habits was wrong. If you type habits into your search bar, you'll quickly find how to break all your bad habits, how to break up with bad habits in three easy steps, and how to overcome distraction. But outside of this habit clickbait, some scientists think that we may never unlearn a habit, that forming and breaking habits is a really slow process and has less to do with willpower than you may think. I hope you came to this channel for a healthy dose of realism. Though you shouldn't always get life advice from Google, so I called an expert to talk about my bad habits. Most phone apps are not constructed at this point to help us form new habits. They help you with scheduling, they help you with clarifying your goals. All of that is great, but they won't form habits. Habits form through repetition in a particular context. This is Professor Wendy Wood, who wrote that myth-busting article and is a legit habits expert. She explains a habit as... Mental shortcuts that we form because we repeat a behavior often enough her research suggests that habits make up way more of our everyday behaviour than you probably realise. What we found is that 43% of the time, people are repeating what they did in the past in a given context and usually thinking about something else other than what they're doing. So they're sort of on autopilot. So habits aren't just bad things like smoking cigarettes or good things like going jogging. They're the infrastructure of our behaviour. Everything from squeezing a tube of toothpaste to stirring our coffee to tying our shoelaces. Almost half of your actions are essentially scripted, which is why habits are so hard to make or break. Now, habits are governed by non-conscious processes in your brain. Most of the time, you're not even aware that you're performing a habit. Because these behaviors are part of our unconscious, they're actually automatic processes in our brain. They don't follow the same logic as conscious thought or decision-making. But we often attribute our actions to decision-making and willpower because these processes are ones that we're consciously aware of. We think that in the new year, we can just decide to start exercising and our willpower will see us through. Though this is an example of the introspection illusion, the belief that we have direct insight into the origins of our behaviors and emotions and mental states when often we don't. To truly influence habits, you need to pay attention to what are called contextual cues. Now these are one of three things that you need to form a habit. So contextual cues can be something like your environment, say if you're standing inside of a KFC. They could be a state you're experiencing, like a state of hunger or stress, or if you're feeling emotional. Or they could be a time, like the moment that you first wake up in the morning. These cues lead to a response, like you reaching for your phone, and a reward, like the enjoyment of looking at your friends' faces on Instagram. This simple description was coined the habit loop by journalist Charles Duhigg. And by repeating a behavior over and over from two months to even nine months, a habit memory is formed. The action becomes habitual, automatic, and you don't even think about it. And some researchers believe you don't unlearn habit memories. So to stop these behaviors, you have to tweak something in this cycle, like that contextual cue. One of the best ways to change an unwanted habit is to change the context so it's not activated anymore. 
Now, our days are full of contextual cues like sitting on the couch and then reaching for chips, so pay attention to them if you want to change bad habits. You could put healthy food or good reading materials in those contexts within easy reach. Breaking and forming habits works best when we make things as easy as possible. So a data analytics company tracked thousands of cell phones for several months to see how far they, they went to these paid fitness centers or gyms. If the phones and the people holding them, obviously, went to a gym that was about 3.6 miles away, they went five times a month. Whereas if they went over five miles away, they only went once a month. Reduce the friction of that distance you'll be more likely to repeat the behavior often enough so that it becomes a habit. When we fail to form new habits, like keeping a New Year's resolution or break bad ones, we often blame ourselves. We blame a lack of drive or willpower. But remember that habits are non-conscious processes in your brain. They're automatic behaviors and it's really hard to change them. But it is possible by thinking about what's causing your current behaviors. So remember to look to those cues, whether that's your environment or a state within yourself, like if you're stressed or emotional emotional or hungry and make it really, really easy for you to repeat new behaviors. And sometimes the reward is so great that we can't change our behaviors entirely. I love using this little colorful internet machine. So I've installed a bunch of useful apps like Joylingo and Kindle so I can learn while I'm scrolling. And I certainly feel a lot better about it. If you need more learning apps and websites to fill your time wisely, another fantastic one is Brilliant, where you can stay sharp in maths and science through bite-sized problem solving. Brilliant is the sponsor of today's video, and if you started doing their daily challenges today, it would only take perhaps 66 days for it to become a habit. But seriously, they make learning fun and have new interactive features on their courses. You could try a course in computer science or statistics fundamentals. You can sign up for a free account at brilliant.org forward slash braincraft. That lets them know you came from this channel. And if you want to go premium for the new year, the first 200 people get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Thanks everyone.